Well, hello everybody. Welcome back. It's Bill. We're going to do a little bit of a how-to session here. And uh, I am going to be using Tom's T-Class body. This is Tom out of Norway, Tom Stain. He's ordered a, a double-bound uh, tobacco-type burst on his T-Class. This is the one with the uh, Anigra finish. And we're going to be doing something a little special on the top. But for now, we're going to do the sides and the back in uh, water-based shellac. I am using this, if you can see it there, uh, Target Coatings. Oh, you can't see that. There we go. Target Coatings Ultra Water Based Seal. It's a shellac uh, barrier coat sanding sealer. That's what we'll be using. And the back, we'll be getting a, a burst as well. But the front will be a little bit different. Working with a uh, sponge brush. Uh, I've already prepped the back. It's um, been sanded to 320 and everything's been scraped back so we're good to go. And we shall just begin to apply. It's water thin so it will run everywhere if I'm not careful. And if I have any areas of glue on my binding at the edge, I'm not too concerned about that because the black burst we'll cover that but for now we're just going to work on the back and I'm going to let that dry and then I'll work on the sides uh, that way I don't have to deal with dripping or uh, runs at all this way it'll uh, just lay on flat give it a good half hour and it'll be done and uh, you can start to see some of the grain coming out really nicely now I'll probably do a couple of coats of this um, it's really uh, my choice. You can probably get away with one, but this will just help a little bit more with the sealing. Uh, alder is not a very porous uh, wood as you would get with swamp ash. It takes a little more prep with swamp ash with the pore filling. But it's pretty straightforward. Uh, what's really nice about this water-based uh, stuff is it uh, hardly smells and the cleanup is just uh, warm water, warm soapy water and uh, you're good to go and no heavy chemicals and of course because of uh, issues with uh, solvent based uh, finishes getting across the board or some of the product you may want to get you can't get so the other thing I've done with this uh, body to prep it is I've uh, before I started the shellac I hit it with uh, water just let the grain raise and then I sand it back down with 320 and that uh, definitely helps. I don't have as much of that issue taking place. And that's it. So I'm going to let that sit. The other nice thing as well is with the binding, if there are any minute gaps that I don't see or have missed in the gluing process, it'll help start to fill that in a little bit, a little bit as well. So I'm going to let that sit. <clears throat> I'll do another coat or the sides and I'll do another uh, round before I tackle the top and then we'll get to see how that looks. Alright, we'll uh, let that sit and we'll be back for the second coat. Well, welcome back everybody. Um, just a review. I have done the uh, shellac and I've lightly sanded it uh, with 600. Actually a used piece of 600 uh, sandpaper. This has gotten, uh, has received two coats of the shellac uh, sanding sealer. And so it's all done, ready to go for uh, barrier coat. Now we're going to concentrate on the top of this guitar body, the Anigra veneer. And what I'm going to do before I actually attempt to do any of the dye session is I'm going to wet the uh, top so that the dye doesn't uh, show up too much streaking first. I've already done this a couple times before and this will raise the grain, or it shouldn't raise the grain any longer. And if it does I can always sand it back. But this is just to help the uh, the die take to the wood a little more evenly. Uh, it'll it'll avoid streaks as well. And uh, I can feel that the grain is coming up some, but you can already see how this uh, is starting to uh, pop the grain a bit, just the wetness of the of the water itself. Okay, so I've sanded back and I'm going to reapply some more uh, moisture, a little bit of water to this so that we don't get the streaking I was mentioning. And we'll be applying some dye. This will help level out the dye as it uh, gets into the wood and you'll see what I mean. I'm using two dye solutions of concentration. This first cup has one drop, this cup has three drops. I'm using uh, Color Effects 
amber dye and uh, great product and uh, that's what I use for all my my dye work. We're going on with a light dye to start and then we will apply the darker stain to help bring up the the grain. So as you can see doing that initial wetting of the uh, veneer helps spread out and make the uh, application of the dye a lot more uh, even and consistent and there's the uh, the depth of uh, amber that's going on in the body what's in my uh, favor is the Enigra is not a very white wood to begin with it has um, just enough uh, tan or, or off-white or whatever you want to call it, uh, light brown to help with the uh, color of the finish for this tobacco burst. And we can see already that there's some uh, really nice uh, grain happening there. I'm not going to let it dry and sand it back. I'm just going to continue on to the next, uh, next coat. And if I find it's too dark I can always go back and uh, thin it out since I'm using a water-based uh, and there's the consistency there. You can see the difference. It doesn't take much. There we go. So I'm going to hold it up like that. You can get a really good shot of that there now. Of course, now I can't see it as well. And I can always go back and add more as I feel the need. This is only a part of the process. When I begin to work with the true oil on this, it will just enhance it to such a level that you'll uh, just be really amazed. And this is looking really well. Sometimes I'll even apply dye straight to the uh, the cloth, but I won't in this case. What I will do is I will add another drop into the uh, into the solution, giving me four drops, less the water that's already in the rag here. Let me just stir that up a bit. And I don't want to apply too much water to the body because it's a thin uh, veneer. I don't want it to reactivate the glue and cause problems there. You can see that's starting to come up really nice now. And I can always work with the toned amber lacquer as well if I find I need to add more. But uh, this is going to be getting the burst. So it will give the effect of looking brighter in the center just because of the uh, fact that there is the dark burst going around it. Anyways, that's a good shot right there. With my water bottle there, you can see a little bit better. Once that uh, true oil goes on, I tell you, it's just a just a oh, night and day difference. It's looking good already, and it would be fine in most cases, but I wanted to take it to the next level. I'm going to let that dry. It'll dry lighter, so it won't um, look like it does now wet. And uh, we'll go back and just review and see if there's any uh, more I want to do with that. All right, so we have a nicely dried surface to work with. We don't want any moisture when dealing with the true oil to trapping in any moisture that could cause issues. As you can see it is lighter than it was previously but the true oil will bring up the darkness a little more and start to enhance the grain. So I am using Richwood Casey's true oil and I'm applying it via my finger and I'm going to start in an inconspicuous area and just start to rub it in. Nothing really heavy, just a light thin coat. That way we get good uh, curing and we don't have to worry about it getting overly uh, sticky or dealing with uh, waiting for long periods of time for it to cure. And I may only do two coats. We want just enough so that it really enhances the grain 
and then the remainder will be uh, clear coated to seal it in or barrier coated in then I can work on the burst and then on to uh, the final clear coating with the potential of maybe doing a slight amber enhancement in the uh, toned lacquer if I find it's not dark enough once I get this first layer on here I'll uh, show you just how uh, nicely it enhances the grain it's going to soak up uh, a fair amount and I'll let this sit for 24, at least 24 hours before I do anything with it again there's no hurry with this so I'm going to do it right the first time because once it's in there, it's in there, and there's no sanding it back to getting it out because of the thickness of the veneer would be into the uh, alder, alder wood, so there's no point. Obviously, the edges aren't as critical because we're going to be into uh, the burst as well. The other thing that needs to be done before I do any uh, clear coating is I would wipe this down with a denatured alcohol to get any solvent or any uh, residue off. So I'm working with a really clean slate. We don't want uh, chipping or peeling at any point down the road. We want it to uh, adhere really well. It's looking really good from where I'm uh, standing. So, this is only one of the different methods for enhancing grain. There's the uh, other way of hitting it with a dark stain, a brown or a black stain, letting it dry, sanding it back, and then using your uh, colored stain to bring up that 3D effect. I'm using the uh, true oil and the uh, tongue oil aspect of it or linseed oil I should say it's a derivative of that chemical mixture I know there's a guy on the uh, Telecaster website that does uh, lap steels in total uh, true oil finishes and they just look stunning because if there's any figure at all in the wood, the true oil will bring it up, no problem. When I worked on Tom Reichelt's tea class in Norway, we used a true oil finish with nothing on top, just about three, three to four light coats, and we left it natural like that, even with a bit of the grain showing, and to turn out really well, nice and comfortable. Okay, I'm going to close the lid on this and then I'll uh, just tilt that body into the into this light there a little bit. So we got a good start. Once we get to about the fourth layer, if I go that far, it's going to really start to do its thing. So I'm going to let that dry, and then tomorrow we'll do another session and see where we're at, and then we'll continue on. Okay, we're back. This will be the final uh, stage uh, prior to top coating and sealing in the uh, true oil. This is a fourth coat. I didn't show the two second and third coats, and uh, I'm going to stop here because I have the effect that I want, and uh, I think you kind of get a bit of an idea here of just what we get happening with the uh, light. You can see the chatoyants and the 3D, the ripple of the tiger stripe in there of the the Anigra. And uh, just for your uh, information, I use wood essence out of Manitoba for my finishing supplies. That's where I get my color effects dyes from and my water-based uh, finishing system. So from here, this one will get uh, a few number of coats of clear coat to close it in 
then I will start with my burst and once I've uh, finished the burst I'll reassess to see if we have the color that we want I think we're pretty good the uh, true oil does add a little bit of darkening amber as well to the amber dyeing that we did and um, it's just gonna look wonderful with the uh, gold hardware and so the next step will be to let that cure over the next few days make sure it's nice and cured before I go on to doing the finish with the clear coat or the uh, barrier coat and I'll be wiping it down with a 50-50 solution of water and uh, denatured alcohol to get that uh, any solvent uh, off of the uh, surface 